What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, reflected cross-site scripting with event handlers and attributes blocked. We get some information here. We want to inject a vector that when clicked calls the alert function. And it just mentions that we need to label our vector with the word click in order to induce the simulated lab use to click your vector. Gives an example there. It's got an anchor tag with a href attribute. It's just that we're not going to be able to make use of the href attribute, at least not directly based on the lab title. So we'll notice that some tags are blocked by this search field. For example, if we try a H1, we get this JSON response tag is not allowed. This is actually generated by the web application firewall. However, we'll see that certain tags actually bypass the firewall. So for example, if we just had an anchor tag with click me and close the anchor tag, Let's try searching for this. Let's see what we get. So you can see we have click me rendered to the page. Notice when I hover the cursor, it's underlined. So it's behaving like an anchor tag, like a hyperlink. And sure enough, if we inspect the element, we can see that it is in fact injected into the page. We can see an anchor tag. Now, as we mentioned at the outset of the lab, the ideal scenario here is that we just provide a href attribute. Um, we could do something like JavaScript colon alert one, two, three, type click me because we know we need the word click in the attack vector. We simply close the hyperlink, but guess what's going to happen? We're going to search for this. Once again, we hit the web application firewall because it's saying, although we'll let you use the anchor tag, you can't attach a href attribute. That's not allowed. We don't get a response from the page because our request is rejected by the web application firewall. So the next question is, we can't use a href directly. So what can we use? We can obviously use anchor tags. What else can we use? Which other tags are acceptable? And this is where we can fuzz the input here to find which tags are okay. We're going to make use of Burp Suite for this. I'm going to make use of their cross-site scripting payload cheat sheet. So we can see here, we have the option to copy tags to clipboard. The next objective is to fire up a relevant request in Burp Suite. So here in Burp, we can see the request we made to the search endpoint. So we can see a URL encoded anchor tag with alert one, two, three. We're going to send that to intruder and we're going to see which tags we can actually make use of that get past the web application firewall. So we're going to replace this value with a payload marker inside angle brackets. In fact, let's make use of two payload markers to denote the beginning and the end of the payload. We then head to payload settings. We can paste in our copied list of tags to iterate through. And let's choose start attack. Now as a baseline, we know the anchor tag is going to bypass the web application firewall. So we are anticipating a 200 response on the anchor tag. Question is, do any other tags return a 200 response and successfully get past the firewall. We'll be back shortly when we've got some results. Okay, so we've got some results in. The lab didn't really like this intruder attack too much. You can see a lot of the requests actually errored out. We can see the anchor tag gets a 200 response and we can see animate gets a 200 response. And if we check the MDN web docs, we can see that animate is actually an SVG element. So it's logical to guess that possibly SVG tags are going to be allowed as well. Okay, so as a test, let's see if we can actually pass SVG tags into the query box. We search, we can see we get a response from the server, which means this is not being blocked by the web application firewall. So we know so far that we can make use of anchor tags, we can make use of animate, and we can make use of SVG tags. This is really a lab on possible attack vectors if SVG elements can be injected into the page. So it's really just a case of understanding some of the features of SVG. The idea is we can define markup for an image, but one of the other things that we can do inside SVG tags is we can make use of elements. So for example, we could have an element like an anchor tag, and we could simply have click me, and then we could close our SVG. Now, just as a test, let's search for this. And you'll notice that we don't actually get click me rendered to the page. And the reason for that is if we want to include text 
inside SVG, we have to make use of a text element. So actually the correct way of marking this up would be to have an anchor tag. Inside the anchor tag, we actually have an extra text tag, which we're then going to close. And we can specify some of the features of that text tag. So notice what the MDN web docs says here. The SVG text element draws a graphic element consisting of text. Notice what it says below. If text is included in SVG, not inside of a text element, it is not rendered. So we know with HTML, we can kind of just include text anywhere. And if it's not inside a tag, it will just be rendered as plain text to the page. That's not how things work with SVG. We actually have to put our text inside a box. Notice as well, we can specify the size. We can have an X attribute and a Y attribute. So returning to our lab, so returning to our lab, we know that we want to specify an X attribute. Let's set it to 20 and a Y attribute of 20. Now, if we click search, we should actually see our click me rendered to the page. Of course, we did in fact forget one key attribute, which is to actually include some text inside the text tag. So we'll call this click me. Now, if we click search, we can see click me rendered to the page. It's an anchor tag. In fact, if we inspect this in the DOM, we'll see that we have an anchor tag and we have text inside of that anchor tag. So it's working as an anchor tag. It just doesn't have a href attribute. And so far we know including href attributes is being blocked by the web application firewall. But this is where the SVG animate tag comes into play. So taking a look once again at this animate page on the MDN web docs, it says the SVG animate element provides a way to animate an attribute of an element over time. Now that's interesting because our problem is we can't add the href attribute to an anchor tag, but it's telling us that we can control attributes making use of this animate tag. And it gives an example here. So we have some SVG tags. We're then defining a rectangle. So we have the name rect here. So that's the name of the element. But inside that element, we have animate tags. And these animate tags are actually setting an attribute on that rect element. So we have attribute name, rx, then we have values. So this is the same as having rect, then having rx equals zero colon five colon zero. This is exactly what we want to do with the anchor tag. We know we can't use href directly, but we do have access to animate, which can add an attribute to the element. So returning to our previous payload, we know that inside the anchor tag, we can actually define animate and we can set attribute name equals href, right? We want to add a href attribute values equals. And here's when we can include JavaScript colon alert. And then of course we want to close our animate tag and we can make use of a self closing tag for that. Okay, so let's quickly review this payload. So we have an anchor tag inside SVG. We know that we can use animate in SVG to control the attributes on the parent element, which is anchor tag in this case. So we're setting the attribute name to href and we're setting the value of that href to JavaScript colon alert. Also inside the anchor tag, we have a text box. Remember we saw that in SVG, you can't just include plain text. You have to specify text within a text element and specify the X and Y values for the size of the text. Okay, without further ado, let's search for that. Let's see what we get. And we get, congratulations, you solved the lab. So a little bit of post analysis here. Let's inspect the DOM. So we can see our injected SVG. We have our anchor tag, and then we have animate inside of that. And although we don't see the href directly on the anchor tag, we know that it must have been applied to that anchor tag as part of this SVG element. And the reason we know that is because if we click on click me, we get alert one popped up to the screen. So although we can't see anchor tag href equals JavaScript colon alert one, we know that it's working that way because we get the exact same result. When we click on this, we get the JavaScript alert. So a quick summary here, this is really a lab mostly about understanding the different possible attack vectors if we have access to SVG elements. 
And it's quite often the case that developers don't always use SVG. You could have a fully fledged web developer that really doesn't make use of SVG too often. It's often an area of web development that even web developers don't necessarily know too much about. Again, even as someone who is a security researcher, it's possible that you're pretty good at cross-site scripting, but you don't really understand how SVG works. So this is really a lab on possible attack vectors if you can make use of SVG tags. And we've seen some of the features of SVG, how, for example, you need to make use of that text element to include text and how you can control the attributes of parent elements by including that animate tag within inside a parent element inside an SVG container. All right, that's pretty much it for this lab. Hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching, guys.